Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. I have not learned how to use the computer to make my intros, so please subscribe. I'm working on it. Today we're working on this old gal. Uh, when your neighbors know that you work on machines for a living, they always tend to find stuff. And judging from the neighbor this came from, my guess is he found it in the trash. Uh... He's a younger kid, he's, you know, he's just looking for a little help, and I appreciate that. So I help my neighbors whenever I can. In this particular machine, it's a Murray body with a Briggs on it. It's got the plastic carburetor that I like, uh, which should be pretty easy. It doesn't run, it's missing the bail handle here at the top. So the first thing we have to do is take the spring off of that so I can move that out of the way and see if this thing's going to run for this kid. So let's stand by. I've been getting in the comments that I have ruined my brand new white shoes and I have and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all I'm not rich and couldn't afford two pairs of shoes. Second of all I've been wearing those Crocs and because they suck I've developed a sciatic issue. And I was told that if I bought some decent shoes that had some support, it would make all the difference. And it has. So I have thrown away my Crocs because my sciatic pain has gone away. But again, I can't afford another pair of shoes. So, yep, I went ahead and ruined them for medical reasons. So I'm taking out these two screws to take this top cover off. Is there three on here? Remember, it shouldn't be. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Every one of these little suckers has got to be a little bit different. Otherwise, they can't get new patents and make stuff work only for them. So in this case, they buried a screw. You know what? Stupid ass shit. Let's put an extra piece of plastic on here we don't need so we can cover up a screw. So that if somebody tries to work on their machine, they'll break it. Alright, the reason that I took this cover off is because there's a spring underneath it here that I want to get to take it off. Now, if I had a spare bail, I wouldn't be doing this, but I don't have any spares. When I moved from the old shop, I threw away my boxes of extra parts because I knew I wouldn't have a shop to go to. So I'm just disconnecting this spring so that now you can make this lever work by hand. If the bail came, if the bail was up there, then I would probably just uh just squeeze this over and put a zip tie on it to hold it. When you pull the bail, it pulls this cable and it pulls this sideways. This is the brake that goes on the flywheel and it also makes an electrical connection to kill the spark. That's how you shut it off when you release the bail. This spring is what pulls it over and allows it to shut off. So what I'm probably gonna do for him is just leave the spring off so he can work that. I don't know if you can see that, but when I push it in, it goes back. When I pull it, it goes away. And that's just because I don't have a bail. So I'm gonna stick this back on because the next thing we're gonna do, and if you watch my channel, you already know, 
leave in the comments what I'm going to do next. I am not the one that checks for compression and spark and waste my time. When I'm repairing machines, uh, you can't charge much for lawnmowers and stuff like that. And I'm doing this for free for the kid. So you have to do things efficiently. So why waste time getting out my compression tester and my spark tester and all that when I can literally test for compression and spark all at the same time. And if you haven't guessed already, I'm going to spray a little bit of carb spray in there and see if she'll bark. And then we'll know what's going on. So just make sure all your tools are clear. Uh, I didn't check this to see if it had fuel in it, but if it does, it's not any good. It does. Let's, uh, let's just see if she'll start without first. He might have put that fuel in there. And if you couldn't release the bail cable, then you couldn't spin the motor. So he would have no idea whether this thing worked or not. So I'm going to pull that and just give it a few pulls. Okay, it's making a weird noise, but it did start up, which is good. Other than the noise it made with the blade hitting, it sounded just fine. The carburetor's clearly dirty. Uh, that's not going to be an issue. We'll clean that. Let's find out why that's making noise. Ah. Watch out, peanut. Okay. The blade is actually hitting the side here and not this side. So I'll tell you what a quick fix is going to be for that. Um, I'm going to get my ball peen hammer and we're just going to persuade this out. It looks like it's bent just a little bit. And so what's happening right there is we're hitting the side of the machine right about there. So I'm going to go get my hammer and we're going to persuade this thing out of the way. Oh. All right. So we're just going to Find where it's hitting, which is right there, and we're going to persuade it not to hit anymore. Look at that. Now there's plenty of room. Awesome. These, deck, these decks are very lightweight, and often, uh, if you're putting it in and out of a truck bed, say, and you drop it, uh, anything could happen now the carburetor flooded while it was up on its side I can smell a ton of fuel so I'm just curious at the moment if this thing will start again I think we can tighten that down I know I'm gonna have to pull that carburetor but I just want to see if she'll start As you can hear the idle is just a tiny bit low uh, but the carburetor seems to be running okay honestly so I think what I'm gonna do is not much um, I'm not charging them for this and 
and he doesn't have any money. So I want to give him back the machine in running condition, but I'm not one to fix things that don't need to be fixed. So I just want to check something here real quick. It sounds pretty good, and now that we've persuaded the frame back out of the way, that seems to be fine. Um, all right, it looks to me like all I can really do is adjust the throttle, which is gonna be here. Uh, let me see if I can get you down there and show you which means the camera might get a little shaky. Now, thankfully, I did get a new, much better phone with uh, anti-shake or whatever you call it. See if we can get it to... There is... I don't think you're going to be able to see it. This lever right here okay it's attached to the machine here this lever right here will either go in that direction or go in that direction and if you just put a pair of needle nose pliers on there when it's running and bend it you'll tighten up the spring there's a spring up there and you'll tighten that up and that will actually tighten up your governor back here so to give it a little bit more idle i'm just going to put my needle nose pliers right there and I'm gonna bend it forward just a little and see if I can up that idle. All right, I put my cover back on. bend that lever forward just a little to put a little bit more tension on that spring. I'm going to give it a little bit more. to do is work this cable by hand now when you pull the bale it actually pulls that cable that way which disengages the brake and allows for spark so to turn it off he's just gonna have to push that back forward to re-engage it the brake won't work but until we can find another bale handle for those of you that might be watching this this is a bale handle right here. This is my friend's mower, so I can't take it off of there. But it's just a bale handle, and when you pull it, it works that cable. It pulls the cable out. When you let it go, the spring pulls it back up, lets it engage, shuts off the mower. So, in this case... I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. It seems to be starting up just fine. Uh, it seems to be running just fine by taking that spring off so that he can disengage that and make it run. So if you ever have a situation where your bale broke, okay, or even your bale cable broke, and you need to use your mower quickly one more time before getting it repaired, up under there is a little spring. You just disengage it from one side and that will allow you to move that freely or completely take the cable off and you can put a zip, a zip tie through the end of it and move it manually until you can get it fixed, until you can order a new cable. You might try to find a bale handle on eBay. Uh, we get mowers thrown away all the time, especially this time of the year. 
over the next month or two there's going to be mowers completely thrown away and when i say thrown away i just did a video on this tractor that was thrown away in the neighborhood it was outside with a sign that said free i put a tire tube in the back tire i need to do the same on the other side um i got a key for it charge put a new battery in it and it started up and i've already cut the grass with it, it runs like a top and someone threw that away over a tire tube and a lost key so if you look around your neighborhood especially on garbage night uh, in the springtime you'll probably find another mower and most of those bale handles they're all one size fits all so if you made it this far hit the like button it's somewhere between my chin and my balls and i hope this helped and i'll see you soon